Hello and welcome to another episode of Solar Professor and I am your Solar Professor Steve Geiger. Today I've got a few things I'd like to go over with you. In particular, I'd like to start some lessons on PV 101. It's the basics of photovoltaics. But before we get started in that, there's a few things that um, I would like us to discuss in regards to different types of solar. That's the first thing we'll look at. The second thing we'll look at is types of actual PV or photovoltaic systems. So, let's get started. First, I'd like to introduce a solar thermal system. A solar thermal system is a water system. Um, it's a common type of system you may see here and there. Although photovoltaics has become more popular than solar thermal, what you'll notice with solar thermal is um, pipes on the roof or tubes oftentimes. And what, what happens is water is basically pumped through the system uh, in order to warm it. And it can be used for uh, swimming pools, it can be used for um, just water heating in general. Here's a couple of other examples. This is an older type which, with, which has a bunch of tiny little tubes in it. And this is common for a swimming pool. In fact, you see the swimming pool in the background right there. Here's another one as well. And this almost looks like a photovoltaic panel because it's got a really smooth surface on it. There are other ones that look like water tanks on the roof. And those are all, again, water, um, uh, solar, and we call that solar thermal. Let's move into the next type. And, of course, that is our photovoltaics. And we talked about that in our intro video, what the word photovoltaics means. And you'll notice um, a photovoltaic panel, oftentimes you'll see the actual cells here on there. Sometimes you'll see this little diamond looking cutout in there, and that's uh, definitely a giveaway that it is a solar electric panel, photovoltaic panel. Also on the back, um, you're going to see some wires coming out of it. This is actually called a junction box. This is where all the little traces and all the solder lines on the uh, solar cells as they capture the power, it uh, brings them through the back, through the junction box, and of course uh, the power comes out through the wires. Got a couple more pictures for you here as well. Here's a rooftop system, different types of solar panels, many different brands of photovoltaic panels, um, which we actually call um, modules, and that is the uh, correct scientific terminology that we use. But in layman's terms, everybody calls them a solar panel. Uh, when in fact it's, it's actually the, the correct term is module. And I'll talk later on about when you um, set up a series of modules, you can panelize a system, quote unquote panelize it, and then create a solar array. In fact, I think there's a, a few things in the slides here that, is, that are going to reference the actual array. So, let's continue on and take a look at that. Um, what I specifically want to go over with you today is um, types of solar photovoltaic systems that you may encounter. Really probably the most common type is um, a utility interactive or grid tied system. What we're looking at here is the components of the grid tied system. This image is from um, a book which is just a fantastic book that we use in the industry called Photovoltaic Systems and it's by uh, James Dunlop. What we're seeing here is the solar panels or the array over here. Um, it is connected to uh, a device here called an inverter. Solar panels produce direct current electricity. That needs to be converted into alternating current to be usable in our house. Well, most of our appliances in the house are running off of alternating current. You can get appliances that run off direct current as well, uh, but that's less common in residential homes or businesses these days. Um, this inverter directly connects to the distribution panel. May, there may be some other um, disconnects, there may be some other boxes, some junction boxes or combiner boxes that happen along the way uh, between the path of the solar panels and the final connection to the um, distribution panel or sometimes it's a sub panel, sometimes we call it the main service panel. They're really all the same thing. The electric meter is oftentimes connected to the actual uh, service panel as well. So, utility interactive, really the most common type of um, solar system that, that we see uh, on the market today. One of the other things that um, I did want to mention that I didn't show you in the um, previous slides about uh, different types of systems with the solar thermal and then of course the solar electric. There are other types of systems 
Um, but I'm not going to get into too much detail uh, about those. Less common, we'll see them. At, one of them, for example, is a concentrating solar power system. We'll see those in uh, large utility solar farms and, and stuff like that. But here's our utility interactive system. Let's take a look at a few others here. We have a standalone off grid direct current system. So this one does not have alternating currents loads such as light bulbs or fans or air conditioning units and, and such like that. So we have our solar panel here or, or our array of solar panels. Um, we have a device called a charge controller. This charge controller is the brain of the system. Notice we're also connected to a battery and then the charge controller controls various loads. In this particular case we have a light bulb and then of course a fan over here. And so this is a standalone system um, and uh, uses the battery so that we don't need to be connected to the grid at all and that's the, it's a very unique and interesting system next we're doing a standalone system as well which is an off-grid system but this is one that uh, can produce alternating current for us and so what do you think we have in the mix with this the inverter right there absolutely so we have an inverter here now as well and so with the array the charge controller here's the battery and then we are actually connected to the inverter and when we do that we know that the inverter is um, converting the direct current to alternating current and it allows us to work with our uh, sub panel or our main service panel anything that may house our uh, alternating current loads our lighting systems and such um, within a residence or even a business let's continue our journey today through um, system types very interesting and unique system. This is quite a bit more expensive as well because this combines, this is called a bimodal system. What this combines is the features of a um, interactive system with an off-grid system. And so let's say the power goes down. If the power goes down and you have an interactive system, the, uh, the system goes down. Unless you have uh, battery backup or an off-grid system, this is your battery backup type system called a bimodal system. And so what this, is, uh, this system contains, again, is the array. And in this case, there's a, there is a charge controller. There is a battery bank. Um, oftentimes, there's quite a bit more than just one battery. There's, there's usually several batteries, especially in, in an average home that may want this type of a system. With all of the loads that it has, it's going to need a large array and a large battery bank. Here again is the inverter. And then here, what they've done here is they've set up a standard um, main service panel and then a critical load panel with um, loads that, if the power were to go down, they would be supplied by the uh, inverter. And of course, the batteries um, would be supplying the power for that. You could also set it up so that, that this was not here and you'd just be powering your main service panel. But again, that takes a larger battery bank and uh, a larger array. And then we get into something called days of autonomy and we can discuss that in future lessons. But that's sizing the system to a point where if there are several days without sun to be able to charge your batteries, we are able to, um, to go ahead and be off-grid for that period of time. Let's look at a few more here real quickly. This is a hybrid system. So a hybrid system, same thing as a off-grid system, however, we have another um, energy source uh, available with this system as well. And in this particular case, it's a wind turbine. Um, and so that's the, what, what a hybrid system basically looks like. You could have a grid-tied hybrid system or you could really have an off-grid hybrid system. This is showing the off-grid components uh, as well as the inverter. Over here, very simplistic system, about as simple as it gets. Um, with my students at the colleges, I've, I've set up systems like this. Very simple, very quick, just a simple single solar panel connected to a load. You can use it for a fan, you can use it for lighting. If you need, you know, during the day the sun's out, do you really need a lighting system? Maybe not. Maybe you need a fan. Uh, how about a water pump? Water pump uh, works really well as a direct coupled system. So very simplistic system that, that you can set up. And then of course here is a self-regulated system. This is simply an array. Um, a battery, and then of course a load, whatever it might be, lights or a, um, a, uh, a fan or a pump or something like that. But this, does, this is missing one critical component. 
I'm not a huge fan of these systems because it doesn't have that critical component called the charge controller. We talked about that earlier. And so, you know, it's hard to size this just perfect, but you have to do a really good job of matching the output of the solar panel with the capacity of the battery, and then, of course, the uh, demand of the load. And so, um, simple self-regulated system right there for us. So, that's uh, a quick explanation of different types of systems. Um, as well as different types of solar uh, technology out there and uh, we're going to continue the lessons on uh, the next video. Thanks for watching.